So what will I do? I don't know. Maybe something, maybe nothing. We'll see. If something materializes that seems like it's going to be fun, then as a great man said, we'll deal with that. So until we meet again, you guys stay hard, keep jamming, and we'll see you. All right, and joining us right now from Dallas, Texas, in his bunker, you know him as the old gray wolf. Obviously, it's Mike Reiner who started the ticket as a big P1. This is a big get for me. Mike, what's going on, buddy? Oh, just ready to do a little podcasting with you boys. Well, we appreciate you. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I told, I, you know, we, we've, this is our 49th episode, and I've told my wife, you know, hey, this week we have uh, Josh Young or Nate Lowe or Chris Woodward, John Daniels, Tony Beasley. I told her today, Mike Reiner, she almost wet herself, man. She was excited. She 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 started squealing. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Ah. So maybe she's actually gonna watch it. Huh? Shout out to Lady Jeff. <laughs> That's right. She's so so uh thank you. Yeah, she you you've 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 made uh, my day a lot easier, I think. So but hopefully, hopefully she'll actually watch one of these. She she doesn't care about baseball. <laughs> Time for her to watch. Um, yes. I'm to help you boys out any way I can. Well, we appreciate it. <laughs> that means making things a little smoother with you and your wife, then I'm more than happy to do that. Hey, I mean, maybe you found a post radio gig, man. You, you, He's got you, his if you, podcast if, going. If, right. If you need a if you need a side job or something, you could do <laughs> do marriage counseling or something. Just show no, up. No, no, no. I got enough side jobs, and believe me, I would <laughs> be the last one to offer any sound advice on that. All right. Uh, so, how's retirement, my man? It is great. I was really leery about it at first, but I just didn't know how I would take to it. But I'm taking to it just fine. And you can count me as a very, very happy retiree. Well, good for you. Uh, I, but, but like petty theft keeps you busy, right? Yeah. Petty theft keeps me busy. The podcast keeps me busy. And I, I haven't been able to, nor have I really tried, to completely uh, separate myself from the sports scene. I may not watch it as closely as I once did, but I yeah. do still watch it. All right. So how much, how much Rangers baseball are you watching? I've watched a good bit this year. All right. I've watched a, a, a good bit. I've watched my fair share, and I can tell you a little bit about what's gone right and what's gone wrong with the thing. Well, that was my next question. What? What? Give me your evaluation of the 2022 Texas Rangers. Well, as I've told people many, many times before, what we all have to keep in mind and what – Judging from the uh, situation of a couple of weeks ago, they seem to have lost sight of is this is a rebuild and rebuilds take time. Rebuilds are not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think they are necessarily at the uh, beginning stages of the rebuild any longer, but it's still a rebuild. They're, they're still needing to find guys. They're still needing to, to uh, get cohesion, to come up with cohesion and find guys who, whose games fit together. And then once they do that, they got to learn how to win. Right. They got to learn how to win. And when they do that, they'll be ready to compete again. But that's, that's a lot of stuff, man. That is a <laughs> lot of stuff and it's going to take time. The, the learning to win thing is legitimate. And, you know, Chris Woodward, uh, had s said that since spring training. We this is the year we learn how to win, and uh, you know, the the one run record. He was, they were six and twenty four when he was when he was fired. Um, I mean that's part of it. You know, you, you this team that had no no margin for error can't make mistakes. You, you can't be kicking balls left and right. But it's a real thing. Learning how to win is a real thing, and bringing in a ton of guys, uh, you know, probably isn't doesn't necessarily ensure that's going to happen. So. I, I guess my question to you is, who who do you like? Where, where Which players do you like that you think are long-term pieces? Uh, well, I think Nate Lowe is a long-term piece. I was not too sure about him at first. And really, there were a lot of guys at the start of the season that I just didn't know a whole lot about, but I've been very impressed with Nate Lowe. He's a pretty big-time hitter. 
Yeah, uh, I, know. I, I think Brock Burke is a long a long term piece. I think he is the best pitcher on this team, starter or bullpen, whatever, right now. I think he is a long term piece. I think I'm not sure about this yet, but I think Josh Smith could be. He needs to hit a little bit better. They need to figure out exactly what he is and where they're going to play him. But he's definitely got some skills that I like. Um, in the near term, Adolis certainly fits. He's yeah. just a marvelous athlete all the way around. He could wow. use a little bit more plate discipline. <laughs> but I think there is a path out there for him to be a long-term piece. Um, those are just a few. I, I could probably come up with more if I sure. thought about it, but I, I don't want to hog this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you, I think you hit the big ones, you know, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, Josh Young, if he's called up or not. But, um, yeah, I think, I, I think I'd be interested in your take on that. I mean, you see him every day. You're out there with him every yeah. day. I, I'm not. Yeah, no, I, you know, the, we talked about this, uh, before he came on, but the Rangers needed to see Nate Lowe and Adolis Garcia improve this year. You know, it, the, the development and the rebuilding that they talk about, it wasn't just the minor league guys. It was guys who debuted last year. And, you know, Adolis Garcia had a overall good rookie year, but his second half w- w- was not good. Nate Lowe uh, didn't hit for a lot of power last year. Uh, they needed to see them be better players and or better hitters at least. And they are. I mean, we talked about Nate Lowe's defense. It's not great, but those those are two significant developments for this team and you mentioned sure. you mentioned Brock Burke who was on our who's been on our show before uh you know I, I don't want to make him a starting pitcher I, I think he's, I don't think he wants to be a starting pitcher I think I think he'd consider it but I think where he is is just fine and uh you know with the way baseball trends with with starters going shorter you need guys who can pitch multiple innings and I mean he's 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 been one of the best relievers. Mike's in right. He's been there's, lights out all year. There, there's mean, no they, other way to say it. You and, can't argue uh, with it. So yeah. So I, I I I personally I like Ezekiel Duran better than Josh Smith. Um, but when Josh Smith's right, you know he, he has to hit for power though. That's that's got to be his thing. He can't come up here and just see, single him to death. He's got to be able to drive the ball and hit it out, and that's something he wasn't able to do. So I still um, would like to see them try Brock Burke as a starter just to just to see. Sure. You may be right, though. The way the game is now, the way these games are run, the way these games are managed, you've got to have serious, serious bullpen depth. Yeah, well, and, and, and he's in great have shape. Numbers, and you've got to have quality out there. Yeah, and you know he's just one guy, but he certainly provides quality. And the best place for him may yet be out there. But just for just just for the heck of it, I'd like to see him give him a shot as a starter. Sure, sure, I did. and they might. I mean, you know, spring training. Off season, build him up. He, he, I think, what is it, John? He needs to work on his slider. Is that, that yeah? He's he's the fastball is great in short samples, but if you get him through the lineup more than once, he's got to have something else. And so I think that's what they want him to work on. So yeah, I don't. You you might be onto something. Uh, it definitely keeps coming <laughs> up. Uh, all right. So based on everything we've talked about, and and you mentioned the, you started to mention the firings. Do you do you hang blame on, on Chris Woodward and John Daniels for this? I mean, because. This, this is John Daniels' plan. This rebuild is John Daniels' plan. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You there? You there? I'm sorry there? if we got a little wonky there for a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Yeah. Uh, did you hear the wonky. question? Um, I heard him say this is John Daniels' plan. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you blame Chris Woodward and, and John Daniels? Did they deserve what, what they got? I don't think so. I thought that was a very, very knee-jerk move by whoever it is that makes those decisions. We know so little about the ownership of this thing. Right. Yeah, they've been silent. I've always called them the ghostly trio because (laughs) you just don't, you don't see them, you don't hear from them. They're rumored to be there, but, you know, if you know what they look like, then, then you might know them when you see them, but most people don't. Yeah, and no. that's just a, a horrible, horrible state for any sports franchise. The owner needs to be front and center. He needs to be visible when things go wrong. And I'll give Ray Davis this much credit. He, he did what he needed to do. 
and that's get out there in front of everybody and say, hey, sure. In the, in the at the end of the day, this is on me. And sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. That's the first right thing that he's done that I see since he's owned this this thing. Well, but no, have... I, I don't think those guys got a very fair shake. Yeah. I think they 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 got the ship into the water, but once it started to take on take a few blows on the side, they were cast overboard. That ain't right, man. <laughs> I I agree. When we both agreed on that. Yeah. I mean, look, we weren't here defending Chris Woodward or JD, but we were saying right now in what they're doing now, you can't hold Woodward accountable since he hasn't had a playoff team. It's hard to say it. he's the reason they're losing all the games. That was just my opinion. I don't know if he's a playoff manager. I have no clue if he is, but yeah. he doesn't have a playoff team to do that with. But they made the move. We're moving forward, and you know what? You can't sit here and dwell on it. You got to go. No, what, what you said, Mike, about these guys being invisible is, is absolutely right. I mean, if you look if you look at the owners of the three other major teams in our area, you know who their owners are. They're they're visible. These guys have never been visible, uh, and and it, it's curious. Um, Ray Davis and and Bob Simpson both have field level suites at the at the new ballpark, but they are on the complete other side, uh, completely apart from each other. <laughs> Bob, Bob Bob is on the 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 third base side, Ray is on the on the first base side, and and Neil sits with Ray. So <laughs> you know, I I don't know how much they get along. Honestly, I mean, you never saw them, you never really see them sit sitting together. Uh, Bob's definitely taking a back seat. You know, when, when Nolan was the, the Nolan decision, it was Ray and Bob at, at the at the table uh, talking about the decision and what had transpired. But you're right. I mean, ownership is is the they are the very top of the heap. I'll tell you this: last time John Daniels got an extension, he had to announce it because <laughs> <laughs> Ray Davis wouldn't wouldn't do it, and that's just not right. The the boss needs to be there. And that's just flat out weird. It is. It's it totally is. not right. It's just flat out weird. Sure. Exactly. Now, I've heard, and you can probably address this better than I because this is just what people tell me, but some of these people are in pretty good position to know. I've heard that Simpson is not terribly involved at all anymore. I mean, yeah. to the point of divesting himself of, of most of his, his interest in the team. I don't know where he divested it to. Or who's got it now? Maybe Davis took it off his hands. I don't know, but I hear he's not in, that he's just um, marginally involved, if that. Well, and and um, you know he he w went through a pretty drawn out, messy divorce, and there there was there were rumors. You know, is he going to have to sell part of his ownership stake in the settlement? Uh, I, you know, and and I guess you never know how rich these guys are, depending <laughs> on how they hide their investments and their money. But, I mean, that's a possibility. But Ray Davis has slowly but surely through the years been buying out the, the original ownership group. So he, you know, whereas when the sale went down, it was, a, it was close to an even split on who owned what. But now Ray Davis has a significantly larger share, the largest share. And then I think that's... Well, yeah. and, and I'll say this. I've only been, been credentialed and covering the team for four years. Mm -hmm. I've only ever seen Neil or Ray stand down there by the dugout yeah. every once in a while when we're out there for batting practice or whatever. I've never seen Bob. Yeah. Not in the four years that I've done it. Well, he's in, you know, he's a, he's a wild catter oil man at, at heart. And I know that he, he's been buying up a lot of, a lot of properties in West Texas. Uh, but I, I don't, you know, I, he he is he is noticeably withdrawn from the proceedings, from what I can tell. So I, th I think I think your sources have served you well there. Yeah. Now yeah. Neil, I I wouldn't know him if I saw. <laughs> period. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen as much as a picture of him. <laughs> sure. But I don't have a media guide for this year either. So. <laughs> well, you know, we'll see if John I'm Blake can send you one. Finally, <laughs> let's see. So so as this as this ship moves forward, Mike, what what would you like to see this team do this off season? Well, there's always the age of when are they going to spend some money and get some pitching in here? Yeah. There's always that. Right. It hangs over this team's head like an albatross. <laughs> I, you know, I, they're good, but not great. 
at several positions on the field. There are several that I think if they get a chance to retrench and get better at, then they ought to take advantage of that. Yeah. But the main thing, I think the main thing for them is some way, somehow, continue the development of the young guys. The yeah. Ezekiel Durans that you mentioned a minute ago and guys yeah. like that. I mean, there are a lot of people who could have told you who that guy was. You know, Glenn Otto's another. Continue his development. Yeah. I think some of these guys have a chance to turn into pretty good players. Duran is one. I didn't like Otto too much at first, but I'm coming around on him now. <laughs> He's had some reasonably nice outings yeah. as of late. But the young players on this team need to continue to be developed. Now, I don't know if that means going down there to spring training, just working their ass off, or whether you just run them out there that way that you do and just let them play, let them get experience, let them get at bats, let them get sure. innings, let them get game time and work with them around those things. Get them in there in the video room and say, look what you did here. Mm -hmm. It's really good. You need to do more of that, you know, that type of yeah. thing. Or tell them what they did wrong, whichever the case may be. <laughs> to a little ass. Just a constant ongoing process. And I don't know if there's really too much that that they're going to be able to do that's going to, you know, produce any kind of difference making results overnight. And if that's your case, I guess what I'm saying is if you don't think you can contend next year, and right now, I don't know about you boys, but I don't see any way that's, that's happening. No, I agree, I agree with if that. If you don't think you can, then continue along the developmental path. You know, play these guys, run them out there, see if they can learn how to win, see if they can learn how to win together, like I was saying a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And I think if they can do that, then that will speed things up quite a bit. Well, uh, you know, I, I think confidence – you know, these guys can be super talented and come up from the minor leagues and then immediately start looking over their shoulder. I think that you one, one thing that's it's worked in the past, you just come up and you say, You're the starting center fielder. Yep. Like in Leody Tavares' case. They did it with <laughs> they did lost it, him. Yeah. They did it with Nelson Cruz and when he came up in, at the end of two thousand eight and look what happened to him. Those guys stopped working over looking over their shoulders and they're relaxed. And when you're relaxed, you're confident, you know, you have a job the next day, you're in the lineup. You go out and you hit and 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 play and play like you played all through the minor league. So there's a lot to that. I, I agree with you. I don't think I, I know they keep saying 2023 we're going to contend. They're going to have to spend a lot of money on some of these very kids. very loose loose contention. I just don't I just don't see it until 2024 honestly because you know the farm system didn't develop enough. I don't think this year. And if you know Ray Davis said he's not going to spend as much money as he did last year, well, all right, then you're going to. You're going to go with what you got. Yep. You know, you might get one piece or two, but you're not, you're not going to become I, I a I think that's an excellent point you made about how these guys have to, you know, they're young guys and everything. A lot of them are new to this great land of ours. And that's a very, very shaky proposition for some of those guys. And they're sure. always, some of them are having to look over their shoulder and that's very uncomfortable for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do think that if, if you, you can find some that you see, something in that makes you believe in them and you have enough confidence in them to run them out there every day, no matter what, sooner or later, they'll get the message that, Hey, I'm all right here. I'm a part of yep. this team. I'm going to be a part of this team. Yeah. So let me just go out there and play. I made a couple of mistakes today and they pointed them out to me, but it was no big deal. I'm going to be in the lineup the next day. And that is how you, that, that's how you start to develop chemistry and start to develop confidence in these guys. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. agree. Uh, all right. I know John's got some some questions for you. So, John, take Yeah, I, I'm geeking out with the, you know, I'm, I, look, I, I, I was a day one P1. I mean, I, I, I was a, I'm a big ticket fan. And Mike is actually, Mike grew up and went to high school where my dad went to high school. Is that they, right? They were both Kimball graduates. Now, were you, were you born and raised in Oak Cliff or did you just get there later or, or what's the deal there? No, no, I was born and raised there. <laughs> when I got brought home from the hospital for the very first time, it was over in Cedar Crest. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cedar Crest. I've played that golf course many times. <laughs> I know that neighborhood. My dad played. In fact, my dad was playing Cedar Crest golf course. He was a senior in high school when President Kennedy was shot. Oh, my gosh. And a police officer came up and told them 
hey, the president just got, they had all gotten out of school to go see the president. Well, him and his buddies went and played golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the day, the, this is kind of bad, but the day of 9-11, I yeah. was in Colorado and I played, I played golf and we were at the, it, it, it had all kind of started to happen and we were there in the pro shop and one of the towers fell and we we're like, well, should we go home? And the guy was like, well, there's nothing we can do about it. So we went out and played golf. Got another nine in? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, I know that, that was a wild day altogether. Now, let me ask you this. So you're, you're a huge sports fan. Did you play any, sp- I know you were into music, you played a lot of music. You've been in bands. Did you play any sports growing up? I was never any good. I'm not, uh, I'm just not, I, I don't have the athletic gene coming from anywhere. I played them all, but I had, um, there were limited things in each one that I could do and that I was good at. I was always good at throwing. I was always good at catching. Being able to hit a baseball, I couldn't do that to save my ass. <laughs> and when I was, In junior high, I weighed about, I don't know, 112 pounds or so. So that eliminated the ball for me. All right. So, no, my my athletic feats are very, very limited. Let me ask you this, because, I mean, look, you you, you had strong opinions all in your ticket days. You were were a big sports fan all around. But for me, as an outsider, you seem to be – gravitated it seemed like baseball was your biggest love and you loved baseball is that true uh well we lost the feet a little bit did you are you talking to me about baseball and baseball is my favorite yeah let, yeah. Me, let me say that again when as an outsider listening to the ticket you i mean you, you had your opinion on every sport that was playing in there but as someone listening you seem to gravitate towards baseball as kind of your first and your biggest love was that true was baseball your biggest love there's no doubt Yes, still is. It's the first sport that I really got into, although I was into all of them. Once I got into baseball, I got into the other two. But baseball came first for me. It's the one that I know the most about. It's the one that I've always been uh, most captivated by. It's the one that I've always tried to learn the most about. And it's, I don't know, I guess the best way to put it is to say that it's just the one that I've been most drawn to. But I love them all. So, but like, who are your favorite players growing up? Who, who did, who, who grabbed your attention? Um, Roberto Clemente is Ooh, probably sure. my favorite player of all time because back then we had limited baseball on TV. Right. Came on on the weekends. There was the CBS game of the week, and NBC also carried a game up against it. And it you one of the games usually featured whoever the Yankees were playing, <laughs> but. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Pirates were on TV an inordinate amount of the time back then. Well, and I saw Roberto Clemente play quite a quite a bit. And I don't think I ever saw a game that that I did not act in some way. Yeah. I sure. mean, I would, watch, uh, I would watch a game and I would at the end of it say, OK, why did that game turn out the way it did? What mattered in that game? If Roberto Clemente was out there, he mattered. He oh. did something that mattered. Got a hit, made to play in the football aisle because he had an um, incredible arm. He, right. he just made it matter in some way. And he did the, the whole thing looking like he was really in pain the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let me ask you this. So the Rangers come to town. You're already, you're out of high school. You're a young, young guy then, probably in college. <laughs> Were you immediately a Ranger fan? Oh, yeah. It was a great day when we finally had major league baseball here. You know, I, I wished kind of that we would have had an expansion team, but, and, you know, could have started like from the ground up, like the Cowboys did, like the Mavericks did. That's, you know, sure. That I think that's the ideal way for any, any locality to absorb a sport or a team is to you know grow with it from the ground up but that's not the way it rolled for baseball here so okay 
We have baseball here. I'm definitely on board. And Ted Williams is manager. I love <laughs> him too. So, so I'm a, I'm uh, Jeff didn't get here till after after the uh, Temple was born, and that's my next question about the Temple. I've been going to games since '74. I was seven years old, so I'm I lived through all the the old horrible days uh, of Ranger baseball. But to me, it was like a cathedral. What what was the, what was behind naming it the Temple? Just because we finally had a real stadium. I mean, I started calling it that after you did. You named Globe Life Park the Temple, and it stuck. What was it? It was because you had been in those horrible press boxes at the old stadium, or what was it? Back then, as it was going up, you know, I don't know if they did this for the new place. I don't think they did, but I don't know. Jeff could probably address that better than me. But they offered us media availabilities Mm -hmm. where they would get architects and engineers. And if you wanted to, you could go over there and they'd take you down on the field and tell you what they were doing and tell you how it was going to be. And I was really intrigued by that. But something inside of me said, "Uh uh-uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go into that place until it's time for you to watch actual baseball. And that is what I did. For once, I... I listened to to I uh, listened to my heart, heart as it were, and it told me what to do. And I didn't go in there until it was time to watch actual baseball. And I, the the first time I went in there, I was with Junior Miller and a couple of the other guys from the ticket, and we were walking to wherever it was we were supposed to go, the press box or you know wherever they had us. And I was lagging behind everybody else because I was just. I, I was just like this, like, <laughs> can't believe this. Yeah. And they kept having to say, hey, come on, come on, <laughs> lagging behind. And we got up to the press box and said, you know, you look like a five year old <laughs> when you were walking up here looking at all that stuff. That's pretty good. And no, I- from that, um, somewhere along the line, we were talking about it and somebody mentioned the ballpark and I said, man, this is no ballpark. This is a temple. This is a hallowed shrine to the great game of baseball. <laughs> and I just started calling it that. And somehow it got out there into gen pop. There you go. Uh, to answer your question, they, they did offer uh, tours or media availabilities. We couldn't do it whenever we wanted, whenever they had something to announce. Yeah. I, I probably went in that place, the new place, 10, 10, 12 times before, before it opened. Yeah, I went in a couple. Baseball. Um, but it was interesting in, in 90, when it was being built was the beginning, kind of the beginning of the star telegram morning news, newspaper war over the mid cities. And, and, uh, like both papers had global life park or ballpark in Arlington beat writers. That was their job for a year and a half was to, was to cover the construction of, of the ballpark. And of course, you know, yeah, very big. Very oh, it was big. huge for us that had been going for years and years to see. I remember going in. I went to opening day. When I walked in, Mike, I was just like you. I mean, I was 24, 25 at the time. I was like, holy jeez, this is fantastic. Because I had sat in those bleachers out in the outfield. I mean, hey, look, it was cheaper. I used to go with a $10 bill, and I'd have a beer, two beers, a seat, and I could leave in the seventh inning, and I still have two bucks in my pocket. Wow. I mean, that's how cheap it used to be <laughs> sitting out there. Um, now, Oh, it was great. Now, do you have a name for Globe Life Field yet, or is that you just haven't got the feel for it? No, I don't have a feel for it yet. That's probably going to fall to somebody else. (laughs) I'm not in the game anymore, so I can't force whatever I want the name to be off on the rest of the masses. So that's probably going to fall to somebody else. How do you 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 like it? it? Well, you know, when you look at the entire spectrum of it and the – entire picture it exists for one reason and one reason only and that is to make right the one thing that they didn't do at the temple yeah yeah and that is put a roof on it yep you know yeah they were very smart to do it when they did because they're out of the stomach for the fight to sit out there for three and a half hour baseball games when it's 104 degrees at nine o'clock at night yeah they just don't have the fight for that right so yeah given those two things if it has to be 
and apparently it does. It has to be. I think they did a damn good job of it. I like the place. Yeah, and it, you know the, the 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 way this team's playing now and the way seasons unfolded, they've had they've had crowd they've had sellout crowds or crowds thirty plus that they just wouldn't have had at the old place if there wasn't a roof on it. If people were going to come in and sweat, oh, geez. People, people people will come and watch a team as long as they don't have to sweat. Oh God, I, I I've been going since yeah, I've been going since seventy four, and I'm telling you right now, people don't understand. Sunday was a no go. I had kids at the time that were small. There's no way I was going in a yeah. Sunday afternoon game during the middle of the summer. It was just too damn hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it it's just murderous, <laughs> and you know global warming's taking effect. The ground and the earth and the planet is getting hotter and hotter. And people just don't have the stomach for the fight for it anymore. I yeah. don't blame them. I don't. I don't know if I do either. But yeah. now, you don't have to worry about it. Well, and 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 one other thing about the this place, it is a. It's. I mean, they they had they had they had two concerts this week, right? They had yeah, they had like Def Leppard and Poison, and then the next night they had Lady Gaga. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not a baseball park. I mean, I, I it is in my mind, but it is a three hundred sixty five day a year. Show me how much money you want to give me for this to use our place, and that, that's that's what it is. Yeah, they're taking some of Jerry's. Yeah, money. they are they're they taking are. some of Jerry's money over there. No, I've got no problem with that. I've got no <laughs> problem with them having concerts or whatever in there. Sure, it's a yeah. place where the Rangers play. That doesn't mean that it has to be all that goes on there. Sure, it is okay. kind of weird though with the temple still standing in the background. <laughs> You know, I went and watched some playoff football there last couple of years. It is strange. It's cooler because it's in the fall when you're doing it, and it's playoff football, but it is really weird sitting in what used to be left field and you're up in the stands. You know, yeah. that's just it, – it is kind of strange. All right. All right, so listen, we're going to let you get out of here. I wanted to ask you a question that we've asked every guest. Look, we know a lot about Mike Reiner. We know that you started the ticket – we know that you, you that you named the temple. We know a, you, we know that Stevie Ray Vaughn used to go to dinner with you uh, back before that tragedy happened. We know a lot of fun things. But we ask everyone, our guests, what is one thing nobody knows about you? We've had some great answers that you may, may not know. John Daniels has lucky underwear he wears on airplanes. Um, I don't know, he, he, he takes two pair of underwear with him that he wears on the plane and on back. And he said, it's been good luck. Look what's happened so far. You should have worn them last week. Uh, Brock Burke, we're the ones that found out. I don't know if you know about Brock Burke and his sleepwalking. Uh, that's uh, that's a big deal. He sleepwalks bad. And, and yeah, I heard about that last week. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. He, he, he freaks out. You ought to talk to some of his minor league roommates. They say he's <laughs> weird. What is something that nobody knows about Mike Reiner? Hmm. Okay, I'll dig into the to – the, on Daniel's toy chest here. Okay. And I'll tell you that I have an underwear rotation. <laughs> nice. And it's the same ones, like you got seven pair, and that's the seven pair that go every week? No, no, I've, I've, I've got um, more than seven pair, but I have an underwear rotation. There are certain pairs that are only, well, I mean, every pair is only worn on a certain day. Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like so what what, got, what what day is today? I, I, I've got about four or five um, pair of Thursday underwear, and I got okay. one of them on right now. All right, <laughs> that okay. is interesting. Well, listen, Mike. Look, I this has been this has been great. I mean, I, I I can't tell you how much it meant for me to have you stop down and do this for us. We love the Dark Companion guys. If you haven't seen that, it's over on Vocally. What is that actually? You just you just you just talk a bunch of different. You've had different guests and different venues. It's been pretty neat. Yeah, it's just essentially a bull session. I get people that I find interesting or people that know something about that I want to find out more about, get them in there and talk to them. Nice. It's cool. It's, it's very cool. Like one thing I've always um, been, a, that's always been a real pet peeve of mine in sports is franchise relocation. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the fun reindeer game for you boys. Name an American city that has not had a team either move to it or from it. Uh, one so of the I big cities? hockey in this. Okay. And well, that, also that include the ABA. Yeah. And you can't find many. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. I just off the top of my head, I was, 
I'm from Denver, so I was thinking Denver, and then when you said hockey, I was like, well, that, that doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. Den Denver comes close because yeah. all three of theirs are original, but the hockey team is not. Right. But right. And they had they had an original hockey team. Yeah. The, the, yeah, old, that, the Colorado I mean, Rockies. They come really close. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. But I'm, um, I'm gonna have to think about that one. I would think St. Louis, but then the Rams moved away. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I had um, I had the last guy from Minnesota who's still with the Stars on the podcast yesterday. Okay. And I started talking to him about just what it's like for people in the front office, people on the staff, all that when they find out that the team is moving and what happens to them. Some of them get to go. Some of them don't. What happens to the ones that don't? What are things like for the ones who, who do? And we just had a conversation about that because that's something I'm interested in. That's very what interesting. Idiot, what can I tell you? All right, that's the one I'm going to listen. Is it already up yet, or you just take no, it? It'll be up in a couple of days. Okay. It's kind of ours. Our, uh, hopefully, uh, ours will be out later tonight. If not, it'll be tomorrow. We'll tag you on Twitter. Make sure you get it out there and share it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I will great. share it. Awesome. Yeah, Mike, listen, it's been great. Thanks again for coming on with us. That's Mike Reiner. The old gray wolf, former from the ticket. Now he's with the... the, the, uh, the now he's with retirement. The retirement and the dark <laughs> companion. Mike, thanks a lot, buddy. 